Okay, well, uh, thanks for the introduction, Powell. Yes, uh, I'm Ongan and I'm a postdoc at the International Center for Indoor Environment and Energy. And today I'm going to talk about renewables and building thermal mass and our, let's say, some of our studies to actually maybe answer the question if they are a perfect match for sustainable heating and cooling of buildings. So this is um, part of our ongoing research and there are also uh, some, uh, some other studies also. So uh, to introduce, it may, uh, let's say, be obvious, but uh, it's important to, to set the frame and to, to show or to justify what we do, why we do. Well, uh, we, as people now, we have been hearing a lot about it. We spend uh, most of our lives, uh, lives indoors, which is in buildings and transportation and so on. And uh, but having said that, it brings the, the fact that actually buildings are, uh, they're built for people and they're not really built for, uh, for energy savings, right? So for, with fewer buildings, we would have more energy savings, but that's not uh, the intention. So comfort, health, and uh, productivity of, uh, of the people, that should be achieved with, uh, with the lowest possible energy use. But saying lowest possible energy use, it doesn't really solve the problem because uh, we should also try to replace the, the current fossil fuels or the fossil resources with non-fossil energy, energy resources. Hmm? And uh, as we also heard from uh, Professor Tanabe, and now there's, uh, the, the levels of passive buildings are not, are not enough. We have to do something to make the buildings active so they could uh, produce electricity, heating and cooling for them. So this brings in the renewables into the picture. And one thing when we talk about renewables, one thing we hear a lot about it is that there is a mismatch between the supply and demand. So it means when the renewable is available and when we need it, it doesn't necessarily match. So it basically implies that we need a storage in some, some form somewhere in the system. So what, which brings us to the current um, topic. So we need renewables and if we want to use them in the heating or cooling of buildings, we need a matching system matching heating and cooling system to be able to use them. And that could be in terms of uh, temperatures, that uh, temperatures that we get from the renewables and we use in the heating and cooling systems. And, <coughs> excuse me, heating and cooling systems that allow us to use the building thermal mass actively for heating and cooling purposes. So, one system that could do that and particularly good match is the radiant heating and cooling systems. And um, they work most of the time, if we make them work, with low temperature heating and high temperature cooling principle, which means that uh, the heating medium has temperatures that are close to the, to the indoor temperatures. They are mostly water-based and they would use uh, floor, wall and ceiling surfaces, which also enables having the low temperature heating and high temperature cooling concept. And mostly there are three main types. The first one is the radiant and heating and cooling panels. We will see them in a minute, examples. The, um, the second one is the pipes that are isolated from the main building structure, that's known as radiant surface systems. And the last one where we have the, the pipes that are embedded in the building structure, and those are known as thermally active building systems or, or TAPs. So having said that, the, the first one shows, uh, this one shows an example of, of radiant panels that are usually metal panels attached to metal ceilings suspended from the ceiling. Then we have the examples of radiant surface systems right here in floor, wall, and ceiling. So they are, as you see, decoupled from the main building structure through the insulation right here. And the last one we have is the thermoactive building systems where we have the pipes that are embedded directly in the middle of the building structure, which allows us to, to control the building, building's thermal mass for heating and cooling purposes. So these are, let's say, the relatively more uh, conventional types of, of radiant systems. There is um, a slightly newer system and that is, the, uh, that is the ceiling panels or panels that have microencapsulated phase change materials in them. And here is an example. This is an example of a ceiling, gypsum ceiling panel with microencapsulated phase change materials in them and embedded pipes in them. And this is um, how it actually looks like in reality. So the phase change materials, they are basically organic or inorganic materials that we could um, adjust basically or chemically engineer their uh, phase change temperature to match our, uh, our needs. And in this case, we would be using the phase change temperature range within the thermal indoor environment that we want to achieve, which would then give a certain thermal mass to the building 
and we could um, use that basically for our purposes. And they're promising, especially in lightweight buildings and in, uh, in renovation cases. So moving on, <coughs> the radiant heating and cooling systems, and especially the ones with thermal mass, they have a lot of benefits. They are here, I will not go into all of them. But the two of them, they particularly match uh, the, the use of renewables or the integration of renewables into the building systems. The first one is that they enable the coupling or the integration of renewable energy resources to building heating and cooling systems, mostly because of the matching temperature levels or demands. And the last one is the transferring peak loads to, to off-peak hours and the peak load reductions. So this was the, the room side, or let's say the demand side in the building. Now we go back to the, to the source side. So we talk about renewables, but what are the renewables? So in this case, in, or in this presentation, we are going to talk about the photovoltaic and thermal panels, basically. And the photovoltaic and thermal panels, they convert incoming solar radiation on them into electricity through the photovoltaic part and into thermal energy or heat through the, through the thermal part. So why PVT or why photovoltaic and thermal panels? Because they use um, solar energy, which we could say it's uh, abundant and almost everywhere. Another benefit is that they keep the electrical efficiency of the, of the photovoltaic cells close to nominal because they would be cooling the cells. But at the same time, they will be utilizing the, the heat that would be normally wasted or that would be normally lost. So they could be used for space heating or domestic hot water heating purposes. And since we have the two functions in, uh, in one area or in one component, then we have reduced uh, concerns for space and area. So, and another promising technology is that they, or feature is that different occupant needs can be covered. And that would be electricity, heating, and cooling also. Now we'll get back to that. And it's also possible to couple with, uh, with other renewables. So an example of a photovoltaic and thermal panel could look like this. This is something uh, we developed. This is a photovoltaic and thermal panel we developed through, uh, during our previous research which we developed it here at DTU, tested it out here, and we basically showed that having the two functions combined was more beneficial and more, let's say, energy efficient, more cost effective than having the two of them separately. We did a lot of testing, so I'll not get into details. We had this, um, we had this panel installed in an actual uh, solar decathlon house, which went and competed and actually, and here you could see the, the panels in the roof, which this design actually got an award for the, for the best integrated solar, uh, solar system. So in here we saw that, okay, it could be used for electricity and heating purposes. When the second house came, or when, the, when we participated in the solar decathlon again two years after, we kept this time the, uh, the electricity and the solar thermal separate, but we used um, another technology, and that is called the nocturnal radiative cooling, so which basically uses the existing solar panels but this time during the night, so we circulate the water basically during the, during the night through the existing solar collectors and we basically reject heat to, uh, to the sky through long wave radiation and possibly to the surrounding air through, through convection. So if you had a PVT panel, this is how you get the three functions at once, electricity, heating and cooling. So when we saw the potential in the, um, in the application and in the, um, in the competition, we said, well, okay, why don't we, well, PVT, because it could be slightly um, high, let's say, on the higher end of the cost um, scale, why don't we do some sort of further tests with maybe something that's slightly cheaper, and that could be an Anglais solar collector. So what we did is that we installed um, Anglais solar collectors, as you see here, side by side with, uh, with photovoltaic and thermal panels, and we ran some, some further tests, basically, to get the, the cooling capacity and to, to calculate how much cooling we can get out of them. And we did the, um, the test for a limited amount of period, so we, got, uh, we saw potential. So we said, okay, well, now this is good. It, we know that it sort of works. There's a little bit of a potential. Then we did some uh, further studies, coupling the, the nocturnal radiative cooling through the, through the PVT panels with the, with the phase change material ceiling panels, as I, as I showed earlier. So, we did uh, certain studies during the cooling period and we basically sh saw that uh, depending on where you are, of course, geographically, the, the nocturnal radiative cooling could cover up to 30-35% of the, of the cooling load during the, during the summer. But this is depending on the, the, the 
location. This is very important. So, as I mentioned, this is a uh, part of our ongoing research. So, now I will uh, wrap up. In the end of this uh, project, or in the end of the study, basically we expect to end up with a map that is showing the potential of uh, using PVT panels in different uh, locations, starting from Denmark, spreading to Europe, and choosing some other uh, reference conditions. And we want to see this in terms of electricity heating, which is, let's say, studied a little better, but we want to do it also with, uh, with a focus on the cooling applications, because it's, uh, there's a potential. Then we want to uh, quantify the energy and fossil fuel savings by using uh, photovoltaic and thermal panels and the radiant system combination. And we want to develop something that could be used both for, both for new buildings and also for renovation projects. And this is where the, the phase change material uh, or the panels with PCM comes into the picture. And finally, we want to develop a design and operation guideline for coupling radiant systems with photovoltaic and thermal panels. And this is divided into, let's say, three parts for this purpose, system component selection, dimensioning, and controls. And we want to basically answer questions such as, well, okay, how much, um, how big should your storage tank should be for cooling and for heating? Can you, let's say, make it smaller? Can you get rid of it? If you can get rid of it, how much um, thermal mass do you need in the building? and so forth. These are the questions that we are trying to answer, basically. And in the end, we hope that we are going to contribute to, uh, to the sustainable heating and cooling of, of future buildings. So that was all I had to say. Thank you very much. <laughs>